All right, so uh, you ready to dive into a case that's really, uh, really stuck with people? Oh, absolutely. The Chris Watts case. It's one of those that gets under your skin. It really does. And I think everyone remembers the headlines, but we're going deeper, like way deeper into the stuff that nobody really talks about. Right, because it's not just about the crime itself. It's, uh, how do I even put it? It's like this case exposes something about like human nature itself, you know? It's dark. It's really dark. So Chris Watts lived in Frederick, Colorado, had a seemingly perfect life, right? Picture this. A beautiful wife, Shanann, who was pregnant, by the way, with their son, Nico. And let's not forget their two little girls, Bella and Celeste. Right. A perfect family, or so it seemed. Until Shanann and the girls just vanish. And that's where this case takes that first chilling turn, right? Chris Watts on national television pleading for their safe return. Oh, I remember those images. Playing the distraught husband and father. Classic. But we know better now, don't we? It's Bella. like a textbook case for how these things unfold. Totally. Behind that facade, there's this web of lies, this secret life that starts to unravel. And that's when investigators uncover the affair. Nicole Kessinger, remember her name? The co-worker. Exactly. And as they dig deeper, the cracks in his story become impossible to ignore. Okay, so we've got the affair, the lies, then he goes a step further. Oh yeah, this is where it gets really messed up. First it's all, I don't know what happened. Then he tries to pin it on Shanann, can you believe that? Blaming his pregnant wife for harming their daughters. Dang, he had no choice but to, you know. It was just horrific, this desperate attempt to control the narrative, to make himself the victim. Bone chilling. But eventually, the truth comes out. To avoid the death penalty, he admits to everything, all three murders. A plea deal. And I think it's important to note that Shanann's family, they were the ones who actually pleaded with the prosecution to take the death penalty off the table. They didn't want any more bloodshed, they said. Wow. So Chris Watts, he's behind bars now. Life without parole. But get this, he's not even in Colorado anymore. He was transferred to Wisconsin. Dodge Correctional Institution, to be exact for safety reasons. Yeah, that's not uncommon for high-profile cases like this, the nature of his crimes, especially against his own family. Well, let's just say he wouldn't exactly be welcomed with open arms in a regular prison population. That makes sense, I guess. But here's the thing that's been bugging me. Where is his head at now? Like, does he show any remorse for what he did? This is where things get really interesting. And by interesting, I mean truly bizarre. According to his mom, who shared parts of his letters, Chris claims to have found God in prison. Hold on. He found God after murdering his entire family. I mean, come on. Right. It's hard to wrap your head around. It forces you to ask some really uncomfortable questions about forgiveness, redemption, the whole nine yards. And how do you even begin to reconcile that with his actions? Exactly. But hold on. It gets even wilder because in interviews with investigators, he's also expressed remorse said he wishes things could be normal for Nicole Kessinger, that being a dad was the best part of his life. So which is it? Is he this cold-blooded killer who manipulated everyone? Or is he this remorseful soul trying to find some kind of peace? It's like... It's like he's two different people, right? And that's what makes this case so fascinating, so disturbing. We're trying to understand the mind of a man who committed the unthinkable. And it's like staring into an abyss. It's mind-boggling, really trying to make sense of any of it, but then just when you think you've heard it all. There's always something else, isn't there? Like the whole thing with the photos. So the photos, oh, you mean the ones he had in his cell? Yeah, the pictures of Shanann and the girls, the family he murdered, displayed right there on his wall. Okay, yeah, that, it's just, I don't even know what to say about that. It sparked outrage, to say the least. People saw it as his ultimate slap in the face to the victims, like he was trying to play the grieving husband, you know? totally minimizing what he did. Right, as if having those photos somehow absolves him. Mm -hmm. Sickening. Was there any, like, official response to that? There were petitions, calls for the prison to take them down, and the prison actually did release a statement. Basically, they said they couldn't legally do anything unless the photos violated specific rules, like, I don't know, gang stuff or nudity. So, technically allowed, but morally. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Speaking of things that are morally messed up, this next part, it's a whole other level of unsettling. Brace yourself, because we're about to get into the really weird stuff. Chris Watts, he's got fan mail. Wait, seriously, people are writing to this guy. Oh yeah, and not just any kind of letters, we're talking love letters, women from all over who are attracted to him. Okay, now that is just creepy. Are we talking like a couple of weirdos or is this a thing? 
It's definitely a thing. And these letters, they go beyond just saying they find him attractive. Some of them are full-on love confessions. No way. Give me an example. All right, get ready for this. One woman wrote, and I quote, I've been watching your interview and I just became attracted to you and your story. Don't ask me why, all. And then she goes on to say, I would really, really hope that one day you and I could meet with a bunch of hearts at the end. Oh my God, that is disturbing on so many levels. Is there even a way to explain that? Why someone would be drawn to a guy who did what he did? It's a good question. And it's something that psychologists and criminologists have been trying to figure out for years. They even have a term for it, hybristophilia. Basically, it's being attracted to people who have committed violent crimes. Wow. That's both fascinating and incredibly messed up. Yeah. But with all this focus on Chris Watts, the letters, the photos, it's easy to forget the real victims here. Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and Nico. What happened to their home after everything? The house in Frederick. It was sold eventually $600,000. What? That, that seems low. Well, keep in mind, it's not like it was a normal real estate transaction. The profits from the sale went directly to Shanann's parents, though. On top of a pretty hefty sum, they were awarded in a wrongful death lawsuit against Chris. What should we talking? Six million dollars. Six million. That's a lot. It was a landmark case for sure. The court really took into account the lasting impact of his actions, you know, the emotional toll, the pain, the sheer devastation. I guess no amount of money can truly compensate for a loss like that. But it does offer some sense of justice, at least. Mm. I mean, it's a drop in the bucket compared to their pain, right? Yeah. But OK, six million dollars. And that's not all. It's like this case just keeps getting more and more unbelievable yeah. because then you have Chris Watts' parents. Oh, boy. Yeah. Talk about a whole other layer of complexity. Because they actually defended him, like publicly. They did. They've gone on record multiple times claiming that Chris, their son, is innocent. Innocent. Are you serious? After he confessed. Right. They're basically saying that Shanann was the one who killed the girls. Hold on. Hold on. They think that Shanann, a pregnant mother, murdered her own children, and Chris just, what, took the fall for her. That's their story. They've painted this picture of Shanann as being controlling, manipulative, even abusive towards Chris, saying his confession was his way of protecting her memory. That's it. I mean, is there any part of that that they actually believe? Oh. Or is it just like a desperate attempt to hold on to some kind of image of their son. Honestly, it's impossible to know what goes on in their minds, but Shanann's family, they haven't stayed silent about these accusations. I bet they haven't. What have they said? They've publicly denounced those claims, called them cruel, ridiculous, and completely untrue. For them, there's no question that Chris acted alone, that Shanann was a loving mother and her memory deserves respect not these horrific accusations. So you have these two families forever bound by this tragedy, but on completely opposite sides of the story. It's just heartbreaking, you know? It really is, and it speaks to the ripple effects of crime like this, how it just tears apart everything in its wake. Leaving behind more questions than answers. And you're left wondering, like, how could this happen? What could drive someone to do something so horrific? It's like, it's like trying to understand the depths of human darkness. And some things... Maybe we're just not meant to understand. Maybe. But one thing we can't do, I think, is turn away from it. Because the more we learn about these cases, the more we talk about them. Maybe we can prevent something like this from happening again. I agree. Awareness is key. And remembering the victims, Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and little Nico. Their lives were tragically cut short, but their stories deserve to be told. Exactly. So folks, that's the Chris Watts case, a story of betrayal, deception, and unimaginable loss. And it serves as a stark reminder that sometimes the people closest to us are capable of things we can't even begin to fathom. It's a case that will stay with you long after you hear it. And it forces us to confront those uncomfortable truths about the darkness that exists even in seemingly ordinary lives. If you or someone you know is experiencing domestic violence, please reach out for help. The National Domestic Violence Hotline is available 24-7. You are not alone. And with that, We'll leave you to ponder the complexities of this case. Until next time, stay safe and keep asking questions.